Yo, yo, how y'all doing? It's your boy, Rob Hardy. We are back with another episode of High Theory. There is zero high today. I got my baby girl with me, so, you know, staying, staying sober. Um, but you better believe I got the snacks. Let me tell y'all what I did today. I went to Starbucks. I got me a nice little pumpkin loaf. If you don't know, let me just tell you. You go get you one of them pumpkin loaf with them little pistachios on top of him. Put a little scoop of vanilla ice cream on it. Warmed him. Put a little scoop of vanilla ice cream on him. And we're going to do that thing. You dig what I'm saying? Because I love me some sweets. You dig? But I'm so glad to have y'all here, man, because I wanted to have another hot theory discussion. I might be sober right now, but let me tell y'all. You have many thoughts when you're off the flower. And the other day I was on a date and I couldn't get to it. So it's a couple of things I want to address. Okay. So. First things first, if you ever go on a date with a girl who's in the gym, a woman, excuse me, a woman that's in the gym, and I'm not talking about, oh, she goes every now and then, I'm talking about she really in the gym, I just want to let you know right now, your check is going to be a check, you dig what I'm saying? She going to eat, and that's okay, I ain't really, you know what I'm saying, don't make me no difference, it just surprised me a little bit, I'm like, damn, damn, is she going to eat all of that, damn, she's still going, you feel me, and like, you know, bodies tighten them up, though. Trust me. But if she in that gym, her metabolism is up. You know what I'm saying? And she's going to eat. So let me just throw that out there. But so I go on this date, having a great time, you know, everything. But, you know, um, I like to ask questions, you know, and get a serious feel for, you know, where women are. And I'm a little past the stage of, you know, just shacking up you know what I'm saying like the old boys you say just shacking up I'm a little past that so I look to ask questions you know that, that uh, are potential could you potentially be my partner could this potentially be something you know uh, moving forward so the questions I say one of the questions I ask is you know like what's important to you what are you looking for what you know what values do you need a man out the gate I gotta have a man that's financially stable and so I challenged that I said um you know, what does financially stable mean to you? And she's like, you know, um, own place, own car, not needing this, not needing that, having a stable job uh, or income, possibly multiple streams of income, this, this, and that. And, uh, And so I say, you know, financial stability is this fictional thing that has been given to us, uh, you know, through society of people saying it, and we've been hearing it a lot lately. People are always saying, are you financially stable? Are you financially stable? To be financially stable is a myth. You know, it's a um, financial stability to me, you know, to each his own, but to me, financial stability is a joke. It's an idea that we've been given uh, to keep people working or keep doing things that makes them think they can have freedom which freedom, you know, in itself, in the sense that people say it is this fictitious thing, right? So to me, what I'm saying is, you know, and I explained to her, she's like, what do you mean by that? I said, you know, to me, I would prefer somebody who is morally stable, excuse me, has moral stability and is morally stable um, over this, you know, um, idea of being financially stable. And this is what I mean. To be financially stable always circles around finances. And to be completely honest, civilians, people, consumers, owners, uh, you know, nobody truly has any type of control or power over finances and money in itself. Right. So you can have a career. You can even be a business owner. 
and you say, oh, he's financially stable. His business is really successful, this, this, and that. Very successful businesses fail all the time. In 2008, we saw a market crash, so it can't be about investments. It can't be about the stability of a company because those things happen. That can crash, and you can be without um, you know, uh, jobs. If, if you work in a nine-to-five and you're like, oh, I'm financially stable, that's a, a, a false uh, security. Because at any moment, that job could be gone. That company could be gone. And where does that leave you? You know, if it's like I said, if it's about investments, the markets crashed multiple times. And, you know, what do people do? You can be a multimillionaire. There's been multiple times we've seen in society. Multi, multi-millionaires have gone bankrupt, have lost everything. Homes, cars, bank accounts. They can freeze your assets just like that. You don't have control over that bank account. You don't have control over that money. You store it in a place that you think is secure. Banks can crumble. Seen it happen. Banks can crumble. Uh, financial institutions can crumble. Uh, let me get to this ice cream. I'm just telling y'all. But So this thought of financial stability is all just a joke. It's just an idea that's been given to you, you know, of you can be stable. You know, you're in a place where um, a loss of a job or loss of your business can't hurt you. You can you can be financially broken no matter how much money you have. You can be a billionaire. Bernie Madoff showed us uh, just he showed you in real time in a sense of how you can think something's there. And you can think something is happening financially, and it's really not. Bernie Madoff, some would say, is financially stable. He's got all this money. He's got these assets. He's managing other people's money or not, but whatever the case be. But the moment, and the thing is, he had two separate businesses. He had a legit business on one side, then he had this Ponzi scheme going on the other side. And the crazy thing that you saw was that when the Ponzi scheme was brought to light and he was going to prison, even the legitimate company was out. His wife was left without a home. His kids were left without nothing because of what was going on on the other side. So if, if it's about being financially stable, the money was there, the things were there, you thought he had it, everything gets seized, everything gets taken, even the wife is out. He's in prison, she's out, no home, no nothing. So all of those things can be taken away from you very, very easily. And so this idea of financial stability to me is false. And so once I kind of explained that to her, you know, she's like, took her a while, couldn't really get her mind around it, which is fine. But um, I just think we have to start looking at things in a different way. Now, somebody who is morally stable has freedom from the constructs of the financial institution, right? My stability is through my morals. You could take everything from me right now to this day. You take my home, you could take my cars, you could take my money, you could take my possessions. None of that stuff means anything to me because I'm not tied to those things because I understand those things and be taken from me. You got multiple properties, you know, people are like, oh, you got to get in real estate, build this generational wealth. Generational wealth can be taken from you in a number of ways, but what cannot be taken from you is the moral compass that you live by and what you instill in your children. That's generational wealth because what you'll find is this. Moral stability will outlast the financial institutions when it's all said and done because if I have moral stability, when my finances fail me, people, the world comes down to people. When the finances fail me, the people will know he's a solid guy. He's morally stable. If he say he's going to do it, he's going to do it. You know, all these different things like that. You know, you talk about a job. You can lose a job for a number of reasons. I worked for two companies that sold their technology and did away with the entire company. They were both foreign companies, startup companies. I came in on the startup phase, helped them build the company, different things like that. But when that technology was to a place where they were able to sell it and be profitable, they did. 
in the entire company they let go, CEO, HR, uh, sales force, uh, everybody, research and development, top to bottom, they let the entire company go. What do you do then? What do you do when a company decides to do something like that and you have no power behind it? Or even if you own a company, I've owned a company before. I didn't predict that the pandemic would be what it was, but I mean, you, you never, nobody ever thought of that, but it happened. It came about. It changed the way you had to focus your business. A lot of people lost their businesses. What do you do in those situations? You lean on people because every single time I've never went after a job. I've never applied for a job in my life. And I worked for a few companies. I never applied for a job in my life. I was always recruited by somebody within that company that thought I would be a good fit. They knew me, they liked me, saw my work. And they brought me in every single job I've ever had, every single one of them. And so to be morally stable is more valuable than being financially stable. And you can build somebody up to be financially stable. You know, you can't build somebody up to be morally stable. They got to be raised that way. You know what I'm saying? They, They have to have it in them and you have to do a good job of identifying those people. So that's just my take. That was just a thought I had of, of we put way too much emphasis on being financially stable. And what does that really mean? Like, I feel like financial stability is a fictitious idea that's been sold to us. Like I said, to keep people working, to think they're secure, to, to it's, it's, it's more of putting your life. My loaf is getting cold and I want it to be warm, but this is good. putting their life in a place where everything they are and everything they stand for is tied into money. That's not a good place to be. But as I said, to each his own, date went well. Don't know if there'll be a second one, but it went well. You know, you could take somebody out. This is another thing. You could take somebody out, have a good time, be respectful, enjoy your time, and it doesn't mean it's going to go anywhere. Sometimes I just like the company of a woman. I got a lot of stuff going on. I might not have time for a relationship or to do this with you every day, but I do enjoy the company of a woman here and there. If I got a free moment, I want to go to dinner. Hey, let's go grab some dinner. Let's have a good time. Let's have a good conversation. Let's have conversations like these where we're learning from each other. We're finding out what each other's goals are. Prior to us saying, let's shack up. <laughs> Another episode of Hot Theory Y'all know what it is It's your boy Rod Hardy I've had a pleasure talking to y'all Drop a comment Like, subscribe I need you to boop, boop, boop Like, subscribe, comment Let me know how y'all feel Let me know your thoughts on financial stability Is it really a thing Or is it just this imaginary thing Do you understand what I'm saying Or am I just talking out of my ass You can be honest with me I'm gonna take it for what it is I appreciate y'all tapping in Until next time in that ass, that ain't, that ain't, girl in that ass, that ain't, that ain't, girl in that ass is where I wanna be.